Silentium comes from a dark place at that point in time. And it's interesting to see how it developed over the course of this year because it feels like it didn't necessarily turn out to be the same album in mind because of the influence of the other members. And I think that's better because your perspective can change and you may not always feel the same way that you did as before in regards to a particular type of sound or emotion. And that's what we want to evoke with our songs. It's more about how we can paint a world and how we can get someone to be indulged into that world with our textures and sounds and ambience and melodies. And it's cool to see that. Recruiting new members was quite interesting because I knew that I'd rather have a group work than just solo work. And I personally believe that a group dynamic is more important when it comes to live entertainment, especially music, than just a solo act. It's the synergy I'm looking for between members. There is more cohesion, there's more intricacies, there are little fine details that you can't replicate with just being a solo musician. And I was looking for that avenue. To have the right attitude and the right mindset was important for me. Probably more important than your skill or the level you were at. And with this idea I went in and try to gather around. Being part of Karelia will make it so that each individual member can express themselves regardless of any limitations or any restrictions. I believe that this could be a platform where musicians are freely able to express their creative skill, their artistic display, their prowess, and that's something I value. We don't want to be limited per se to a type of genre or style because I believe that stagnates people to be confined in a certain niche. For us, I think that's not the way to go. We are quite experimental and we want to try out new things all the time. I think this album is a darker approach to the way we have done before with Chrysalis. That is because the origin started in a darker place and so I used that as a, as a source of inspiration for this mini album. Over time, with the addition to members, personalities poured into this project. So it was not just one black stream of darkness, it was starting to give color and shape. It has that melancholy feel. The things that we do are because we are what we are and we want to express ourselves with visual rock and that's basically the aesthetic sides of things is more as a feast of five senses to have not only auditory sensory receptions but also visual receptions to our music and that's why we have this big emphasis on the visual prowess of things especially when it comes to our material i think that compounds to the listening experience especially when there is a high degree of contemporary art styles involved into the creation of your music and not a lot of people do that nowadays and i wonder sometimes why and sometimes I ask myself, what does it mean to express? What, is it, what does it feel to express? You gotta exercise your demons and exercise with them.
My first response was um, when I first saw the glitched out picture of the statue was it's like as if you're taking the classic like norm and it's being mixed up. You're glitching the norm. It's as if like time passed and like the new age is coming in. The statue is obviously the classic. The glitch is the transition and then what's going to be is the music. I feel like the the visuals and the music go along with that. So like the intro builds you up in a very, you know, a normal sort of way and then it just leaps you straight into the, the main hit and that's when the glitching happens. Near the end, it's like you're through the battle, as it were, and now it's the calm. Everyone's licking their wounds, you know, time to reflect upon what's just happened, the glitching, the transition. I try to think of things that sound good but also would fit in well with the sound of the song and not just something completely random stuck in there. Trying to look at the other songs and try and make it somewhat different from those. It's a bit challenging but it's fun because you are constantly needing to try and come up with things that are different even if it's just the simplest thing that's been changed to make it sound slightly different. It's Each one is has its own sound and it's really cool. Because it definitely was a reason. It wasn't just a case of slapping something out and being like, oh, this was this fits. <laughs> it was more, I want to say I tried to go along with the drums, or at least in some way. I just wanted to have something that was, you know, it wasn't too plain. I wanted it to be some, like, main sound to it. And then when the guitar was added, it just, like, made it insane. But I, I'm pretty sure I kind of went off the drums and wanted to keep, like, that same sort of rhythm. And then once I played the first bar, I was like, Oh, and maybe this will be good. I feel like there's each song is like so different. There's something there for everyone. Like I don't think a single song is too similar, which I know a lot of the times can be bad, but in, I think in this case it's pretty good. It seems like a fresh start, kind of like takeoff point. So it's good to have that selection um, that people can choose and then go from there. Only playing bass properly for what, like six, seven months, eight months now, maybe. And then not really knowing anyone. It was weird coming into that, but everyone seems welcoming and I get along great with everyone. So it's fun. The banter is insane.
Well, it would have been around February or March in 2019. I was in a separate band at that time, but I wanted to broaden my horizons and play a different style of music. I was in contact with Zephyrus at the time. I was planning on, you know, having so many, like, you know, new experiences, and I thought being part of Corelia would be a great experience for myself to grow as a musician and to grow as a person. I mean, it was interesting. It was a style of music that I can say quite safely I've never, you know, never really listened to before. I listened to it a couple of times before then, but I'd never really paid much attention to it. Having the opportunity to play a style of music that I myself wasn't really used to, yeah, it was intriguing. It was definitely something I was interested in. I'm happy that I was able to be a part of it. The writing process was really interesting because by the time that I came into it, there was already kind of bits and pieces that had been written. My role when it came to that was to kind of rewrite certain bits that need to be rewritten and then just add little sections in. Writing your own solitary parts, it, it's definitely a process. You can think that you have something that's really good, but it doesn't work with the other musicians put in. So you get this process where you start learning more about the people that you're working with. You start to learn more about their styles, what they would put in, and you can adapt yourself to that. And then, you know, any material that you have doesn't get thrown in the bin, it doesn't get thrown away, it's just, you know, you keep it for later, and then you can, you know, make it into something new. You can use what you had before, you can put it where it fits more organically, it fits the song and the style better. The most interesting part of writing on your own, I think you can hear it in the songs themselves. All six songs are very distinct, they're very unique. I don't even think you could say a lot of the time that they're in the same genres, they're all vastly different. So you're not even just guessing what your fellow musicians, how they would write. You have to think of, well, in this style, how would they write it? In this scenario, how would they do this? I think that it will help get an understanding of the people that you're around. And even before practicing together, you kind of know what your fellow musicians are going to do. The recording process is interesting because you really have to get it right. When you listen to the instrumentals in this, you really get to hear how every individual member has just, you know, so meticulously put in what they've recorded. You really get to see how technically proficient that they can be. But that's because I feel like with this record, with this album, you're going to hear something different than you've heard from the first album. You're going to hear different elements from different musicians. It's no longer this two-piece project. You know, it's going to sound different, it's going to sound interesting, and you're going to hear elements that maybe aren't part of what you usually think of as visual rock. But that's because we're not going to be a visual rock band. We're going to be Corelli's Discord. We're going to be our own thing. just had some more bars and let's see how it sounds in general so we can um, have a better insight. I'll just go for a, a full section, just okay. finish the section A and then let's see how it sounds. Let's just listen to this one. Yeah, it's correct. This makes my, my job easier as well since it's an ambient thing. This is the downbeat, this is your click. Yeah, the hats, that's right, yeah, the hi-hats hats, yeah. are your click. So, yeah. The backbeat two and four are just there to make sure you guys are in, time. in tempo and tight, yeah. as, as well as the harmony, because sometimes the snare drum, when in different places, believe it or not, kind of changes the harmony, the, the, sound, the, yeah. the way it sounds. It's, it's, a bit, it's a bit psychological, but it works. Okay, so we are. This one is incorrect, so as we change here, we still have the dot on there. Uh, but this dot is fine this okay. dot, because you're here as an eighth note, and this is a sixteenth note. Yeah, so know. it's mathematically correct. Okay. So this is a 
funny and uh, yeah. If you have the dot, it becomes more straight. Of course. Well, you cannot control um, sounds in drums yeah. the same way you can control in harmon in harmonic instruments such as guitar and piano. It will sound like how it should. If I if I just uh, hit the snare drum, it will sound the same. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't mind. It doesn't matter if you have the door or not. It yeah, will sound yeah. the same. It's just more for mathematical purposes. Yeah. Let's go and see how it sounds until the guitar. Gonna play a little bit music. Yeah, you can hear it from the metronome. Yeah, it's tight. So I'm I'm being the click in here. Yeah. May sound boring, but uh, it's not. It's not about being boring. Then you go to the film. Now you can yeah. have an idea of how broken it sounds. You can hear it's like that. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's just like not on the dot. Yeah, you can see the difference. Okay. I'm, uh, no, I'm no, we just have to just uh, save it and then you know, yeah, just I'll do the rest of it. Yeah. I like this one. I didn't change the bit on this one, I like it. This one, this group here is actually well built. You added repeat signs. Right? Yeah, but I fixed it up as well. So the guitar left is using wah here. Okay. Wow. Okay. I like this one. This is just very funky. This, this one is this one is difficult. There's a lot of happening recorders here. You can see the. It's not a big change, but it, it adds. I think it adds complexity to adds, that. Adds. What's happening what? is uh, in here, it sounds like it's three notes, it's two notes in a row happening. It sounds like I'm hitting a different symbol, but no. Uh, it's opening and closing the hi hat, mm -hmm. uh, which was punkst. Yeah, punksk, which is it's really used in um, in funk. Basically, the whole the whole drum the drum, the whole the drum line, line. Yeah. It's, it's funk yeah. funk and rock mix. It's basically it's fusion. Cool. Yeah. And it's well, the, the this whole like from the intro of Saudi, you can kind of hear the groove anyway, kind of yeah. groove rock almost, right? Okay, got that. And then there is. Ah, that's sick. That yeah. sounds so sick. <laughs> Just let's solo it. <laughs> that sounds so sick. Let's take it back. Oh yeah. man, that sounds so sick! I love it. Do we have a new one? We can okay. We can leave. We can leave this one in, instead then, if you want. Yeah, just leave it because it sounds so sick. Okay, so just a second. The ending is changed. Entire left. Okay. I think it's cool, like every instrument gets a spotlight. Karelius try to provide an ambient, which is create their own world, which is something that me and Felix have discussed way before. All what music is about today is uh, creating our own, our own world, our own ambient the way you hear us and the way you you see us is as as uh, as Karelius basically this album is going to be various kinds of uh, situations um, it's interesting because the album the sound of the album it's a convulsion of feelings and the convulsion of uh, of um, sounds it's done that way on purpose and the way it's glitchy and that can be applied to aesthetics that's why it's so messy it's to look it's going through uh, a transformation phase that transformation phase um, reflects from chrysalis to silentium chrysalis is a more colorful type of, type of album and this one is more more heavy
when me and Felix had a, com a, a conversation about what uh, what he wanted to do for Corellius, um, in in my in my head was this is my work, and this might go far because the the type of music is not something that's go that's really underground. It's something that uh, can be. It's easy. It's easy to listen. It's not something that's uh, really difficult to 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 listen and to interpret in your own way. It's quite easy. The way the, the melody, it's quite appealing as well. And uh, Felix's plans when it comes to the foundation of the band are quite um, well established. He has a really a really good plan for what he wants to do. Something that takes time. Uh, but it's something that with um, the good the good mindset and the good amount of work that might go far the the, the main foundation of my my uh, my uh, drum grooves are rock basically uh, there's a bit of funk in there I I had some uh, some chops in in uh, Anadonia so we can show how powerful the the drum lines can be as well and that provides a lot of support and uh, it can be uh, interpreted as um, a changing point in the music that's how that's the reason why I had it so uh, those, those kinds of feels in it the way it's painted it's a start when everything it's the beginning of the end basically and it all goes down after the storm it calms down but the damage uh, has been so big that completely destroys you uh, you will understand the intensity of of the of the path and once you hear the convulsion to to see how people going going to react on that voyage from from insane to completely broken our album we look forward to to see and hear your reactions in the future so give it a shot